now we got a little sound system. Play some more old stuff, baby. What? Play some more old stuff. Play whatever. Rose Parade. Rose Parade. <laughs> Rose Parade is too long. Yeah. Rose Parade is too long. Is it on? I mean, the reason for doing this podcast is a completely selfish one. I'm getting this down on the record with the help of others, basically because my memories are starting to fade. I'm getting old enough now where events that have greatly impacted my life and who I am today are getting fuzzy. I need help remembering. Um, getting old sucks, man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'm not there yet, so speak for yourself. (laughs) Uh, I didn't think I was there until we... Of course, you know, there's been a lot of living Just since... Just because we were at the same show doesn't mean we're the same age. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. You could have been like uh, 12 or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's when I started to, to go to 328. I'm not joking. I was 14 years old. In a three-year period from 1997 to 2000, I discovered the music of Elliot Smith. I saw him live three times, and I even got to meet him. I, My words to him were... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you're amazing, Elliot. Uh, you have changed my life as far as uh, music goes. It was, is it true that you wrote Between the Bars while you were watching Xena? <laughs> the Warrior Princess? That was the only thing you said, though, was it? Probably not. I think I remember you saying something about your music changing my life. But that's all I remember. Because that's, that's where we were. The last time I saw him was in Nashville when a storm knocked out the power at the venue, and he played anyway, acoustic. 20 years later, and it is still the best show I've ever witnessed. Yeah, so what brings us together is this one show back in 2000 by one of the best artists, I believe, in the world, and that's Elliot Smith. I've never been to a class reunion. As a rule, I don't look back, but this is different. Those three years were more formative than high school ever was, and I'll never get to see Elliott Smith in concert again. Yeah, at that show I was able to get an autograph on a seven inch vinyl. I was kind of like the fanboy at that one. Uh, Is that the division? Was that the same one I got? Yeah, same one you got. Yeah. Only difference is it says Hart to Thomas, Hart Elliott instead of to Brandon, Hart Elliott. and you you were able to get the set list, you know, when they went back before they came out to do their encore. And uh, Bleach Stone got a pick at that show also. So I've initiated a class reunion of sorts. Old friends and songwriting partners, along with people I've never even met. An Elliot Smith fan reunion, if you will. But dude, I don't remember being backstage at that one. What, what, did we just bow out at that point and go, you take this one, Thomas. I think Thomas snuck, snuck and we stayed. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, when I think about it, I'm pretty sure Thomas snuck. <laughs> Thomas the sneak. Because I, I don't remember going backstage. But he, I think Thomas like just kind of snuck his way back there without telling anybody. I mean, do you... Do you remember? I thought you guys were with me when I did that, but I don't see him going. What, or was we there and we like we've already got his signature? That's I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Maybe together we can collectively remember enough of the story to fill in the gaps of what twenty years of time has erased. Think of it as a love letter to Elliot Smith from Brandon. the crowd was it sounded like they were just screaming their faces off and we were I remember just like being jaw dropped and like but the recording is like I I urge everyone to listen to this recording because I think it's the best representation of a Nashville crowd nice job 